Media Hub, we have the privilege today of speaking to Dr. Gibisa Ejeta. Welcome to South Africa. Thank you very much and thanks for having me. Dr. Ejeta, you are especially well known for your World Food Prize in 2009 for your groundbreaking work in Soga. But when I hear that, I'm reminded of the famous Muhammad Amin's pictures in Ethiopia, showing an Ethiopia where you come from that was full of drought. Have things changed in Ethiopia? They, they have. Um, uh, in the last f five, seven years, maybe ten years in Ethiopia, I have said that Ethiopia really has been at the cusp of a major agricultural revolution. Uh, more and more of the farmers in Ethiopia are turning their faces to science and technology, and, and more and more of them are using improved seed varieties and uh, more agronomic practices in, in food production. Um, and then more and more are beginning to use inputs uh, like fertilizers and so on. And so uh, once the you know, financial situation, the market situations are, are put under control and potentially storage facilities are built up, um, I think Ethiopia is going to really be able to feed itself. I think the government has concentrated on uh, investing in, in agriculture and agricultural sciences and the science and agricultural research programs have been more focused. Um, so I, I see a lot of positive developments taking place. I'm, I've, I've been very hopeful about Ethiopia as I have been about the rest of Africa. And you know, in a more general sense, what about the food crisis in Africa? Africa is currently going through such a harsh food crisis element. People can either not afford to put food on their table or they cannot buy the food they need to put on their table. How can Africa get out of this? Well, I think the, the global food situation is in, in, in jeopardy at the moment uh, because of the uh, food price crisis that have emerged. And we see, we saw this in 2007, 2008, where more and more people were coming into uh, not being able to feed themselves. And so when f there is a rise in food price, uh, the burden, the brunt of that is falling in the poorest of the poor. And so Africa again is facing, facing that. And so there really isn't any other solution that I know of that other than a lot more focus uh, on the parts of the government uh, in terms of food, you know, attaining food security at the national level. And that would mean continually investing more in agriculture and agricultural sciences, continually be more sensitive about um, market development, uh, continually be sensitive about uh, building up storage facilities and, and having interregional uh, trade so that when food price, when food crises emerge and uh, emergencies are there, then at least there is a possibility of getting food from their own storage if possible, if not from neighboring countries and, and, and not rely on, on, on handouts uh, as, as in the past. And so un until we get that corrected, we're, we're going to be in these cycles where there may be boom and bust, uh, you know, when, when we have good rains, uh, we got a boom and, and then when, uh, you know, uh, we have drought and we have these problems. And partly because we have more and more of uh, our countries have a lot of reliance on pastoralists. You know, we, uh, many of our tribes, coastal areas that live in, in, in drylands uh, are the keepers of a lot of our livestock. And, and they are constantly in danger of facing these, in, these drought situation. And so I think in as much as we should pay attention for on uh, crop production, we also need even more attention being put in livestock production and, and pastoralists being taken care of so that they're not in constant jeopardy in, in keeping their animals and in, through them feeding us. Where I come from, we have more of a maize culture than a sorghum culture and your work is really much more inclined towards sorghum. Why sorghum and not maize? Sorghum is a very important crop, uh, unbeknown to many. Uh, sorghum is really among the lifesavers in, in dryland in much of the semi-arid tropics. Uh, corn is a, is a foreign crop. Sorghum is a native crop. And, and so, you know, because of the increased investments in agricultural research, uh, going to corn, uh, corn has become a mo much more important crop 
uh, in, in many African countries. Um, but I think we need to be very careful and not to forget some of these indigenous crops that are very, very important because they're so uh, well adapted to the conditions of the semi-arid tropics. And when push comes to shove, they are the ones many of our people rely on f for, to feed themselves. And so uh, more investment in research. Um, I hope my work would uh, show that uh, tremendous uh, success can be, I mean, improvement could be made, advances can be made by uh, focusing on, on research into our indigenous crops. And so sorghum and mullets are very, very important to Africa, probably more important than corn. Let's get into the nitty gritty of your work. What were your findings, your breakthrough findings in Soga? Well, what, what I found, the work, uh, I work on many areas in sorghum, but the work that the World Food Prize um, uh, recognized is the work on drought tolerance. Sorghum is a very drought tolerant crop to start. And the work that we did is finding uh, putting in more drought tolerance in an, in an already drought tolerant crop and therefore providing a much more greater domain for, for spreading. And we did this by developing the first commercial sorghum hybrid in Africa and to provide that technology for drought tolerance in a way by way of hybrids that could be commercialized um, in, in, in a number of areas. And the second part of the work that the World Food Prize recognized is there is a very important parasitic weed called Striga, and that is the greatest biological constraint in the whole continent in, in food production. It affects maize, sorghum, uh, it affects sugarcane, it affects uh, millets. So it's a very, very important deadly parasite. And so uh, the work that, that uh, my students and I did is to find a very novel solution for uh, finding, for protecting the crop from damage by the parasite. The way we did it is by looking at genetic variation and, and identifying major genes uh, that control um, or interrupt the host parasite relationship and therefore uh, control the parasite. And so we have a number of major genes, we stack them together and to get a more um, uh, broad resistance to the parasite. And uh, it is indeed a significant breakthrough in terms of providing opportunities for growing a parasite resistant crop in, in an environment in which the parasite is really uh, dominant in the continent. You know, your work has made strides throughout the world. How do we ensure that the work that you are teaching, the breakthroughs you're finding in the United States, where you live, are coming back to Africa? Well, we've done that already. I think, you know, the work that I have done was supported by the U.S. Agency for International Development, primarily, and also by the Rockefeller Foundation. And part of that um, funding enabled us to link up with African National Program and working very closely with them and so that the technology that we produce is, is exposed to the scientists here and the scientists here then would utilize it for the, their specific um, country and specific region. And uh, we have been doing this for over 25 years. Part of the work, um, uh, uh, the, f the funding that I have from the USAID is to sponsor a collaborative research support program called CRISP. And the, the, the modus operandi of the CRISP program is to fund both the U.S. scientists and the African scientists to work side by side to take some of these technologies and products of the, um, the research that we have and making it, tailor make it to the local needs and also come up with a means to deploy the technology so that the farmers who need it most uh, are, are exposed to that and utilizing it. And so the, the work was recognized because not because of the breakthrough alone, but because we also paid attention to transfer it to the communities that need them. Which countries in Africa have you worked in? I have worked in a number of countries, all the way from Mali, Burkina, and Niger, to Sudan, to in Ethiopia, in, um, in uh, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, uh, a little bit in Zambia. 
a little bit in Mozambique, so in a number of African countries. Like we said earlier, Dr. Ajeta, you're well known for the 2009 World Food Prize for your breakthrough work in Sogam. But for you personally, what do you consider to be your greatest achievement? Well, the greatest achievement for me is the fact that the, the work that I have done has somehow then found a way to solve problems of the poor. And, and I've always been driven by that. I'm a scientist first and foremost, but also I'm a, a scientist that have a reason from the continent and grew up in very modest and humble environment. And I have seen hunger myself personally. And therefore, for me to have come around to find a way to bring my science to solve problems of the poor communities where I grew up has been the most satisfying for me. Dr. Ajeta, I would like to thank you for your time and we wish you all the best in your work here in Africa and throughout the world. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.